Hello, my name is Brian Gilbert and I am an emergency medicine clinical pharmacy specialist and residency program director of critical care pharmacy at Wesley Medical Center in Wichita, Kansas. And I am going to be speaking to you today about some tools to identify candidates for factor 10A inhibitor uh, bleeding reversal. And I'd like to thank the FSHP uh, Education Committee for allowing me to discuss on this topic in this five minute clinical consult. So let's get started. So we know that one of the benefits of utilizing factor 10A inhibitors are that they do not require routine monitoring. However, if a patient presents with uh, you know, a, a major bleed and it's thought that a factor 10A inhibitor may be involved, this can be a disadvantage. And one of the things we wanna avoid is erroneous administration of reversal agents uh, due to the fact that these patients were at a prothrombotic state, and that's why they uh, are on these oral anticoagulants to begin with. So here I have listed a few options in determining, uh, you know, drug presence and candidacy potentially for reversal. One thing I'll mention is that uh, in terms of the uh, drug levels or quantitative values, there's very limited data that has uh, looked at stratification in terms of uh, you know, risk for hematoma expansion uh, based on drug levels. So my recommendation for this is to utilize these more so as a qualitative uh, fashion in determining drug presence or not drug presence for candidacy, not necessarily just the values. So the first one I have listed here is the obviously a calibrated anti-10A. So if you have something that is going to be uh, specific for rivaroxaban or apixaban, feel free to utilize this in this setting. Uh, again, using a qualitative value. If elevated, you can consider reversal. The same thing with unfractionated uh, or low molecular weight anti-10A assays. Again, you're just using these uh, to determine drug presence. So if there's any elevation, you can uh, feel pretty confident that there is drug present. PTINR, if uh, you have uh, an elevation there, you can consider that there's probably a super, th super therapeutic drug level and uh, can't, uh, reversal would be ideal. However, normal values do not exclude drug presence in this setting. And then viscoelastic testing, so rotim and tag. If you have any sort of uh, prolonged factor times, uh, you can consider that the pa patients uh, have some sort of coagulopathy and may be benefit, uh, benefiting from a reversal. However, uh, both of the uh, viscoelastic testing uh, modalities uh, aren't great at uh, detecting low serum concentration of factor 10A inhibitors. Uh, however, it's, it remains to be determined whether or not it's uh, clinically relevant or not. Um, but these are good ways that, again, identifying qualitatively whether or not drugs present and can help you uh, determine candidacy. So I wanted to discuss with you a patient case I recently had in which uh, I utilized a uh, tool from the previous slide and, and identified candidacy for reversal uh, for someone with a uh, suspected factor 10A inhibitor associated bleed. So we had a 73 year old male presented after endorsing a two day history of headache and confusion. We obtained labs and a stat head CT. And as you can see, we had a, a intraparenchymal hemorrhage here. Uh, patient's GCS was, was moderate around 13. So there was questionable history of utilization of apixaban in this patient. Uh, and so the uh, physician ordered uh, 25 units per kilo of four factor PCC. Um, after review, uh, given his stability at this point, um, I did recommend an unfractionated anti-10A assay. Um, and the reason I utilized that in, that in this setting is I've worked with my lab uh, to determine at which assay they can get back quickest. And so uh, we ordered it and it came back undetectable uh, in an approximately 10 minutes in terms of turnaround time. And we uh, discussed, uh, and after discussion, we held the uh, four-factor PCC, uh, which was approximately 2,000 units and uh, or four vials of the 500 units. We got a repeat head CT 12 hours later, and we showed a stable uh, intraparenchymal hemorrhage there. And so this is another opportunity where you can, you know, potentially have a pharmacoeconomic impact, formulary impact, given that uh, all the shortages we've had and uh, four-factor PCC being one that's uh, been on and off shortage over the past 18 months. So really these, these are opportunities to identify uh, 
you know, candidacies and can really help your, your formulary and uh, can definitely help in, in budget situations with a high cost med. I wanna thank you for your time and thank uh, FSHP again for this opportunity. Uh, if you have questions, you can reach out to me. Uh, my email is listed and then I'm also on Twitter and thank you for your time.